Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while, it's been a minute, but I am back yet again. So a lot has happened in the royal family, especially the events regarding Prince A. I'm personally extremely surprised that the victim herself did not seek a public trial. And of course, my gaze has turned to more pressing things, such as who paid for this settlement that she received, whose pockets coughed up that million dollar bill. Allegedly, she received a settlement within the sum of at least 12 to 14 million pounds. Who paid for it? That's what I would really like to know. And I hope that it did not directly come from my purse or the Queen herself, because of course, I would be greatly disappointed as a British citizen. I do not believe that Mr. Prince A should have been allowed to make such a settlement. But then on the other hand, I wholeheartedly understand that it was necessary considering the Queen's fragile state. She now has COVID. So of course she's very fragile. She's 96 years old. Her Jubilee is coming up. Everyone wants her to make it to that deadline. And it would be quite tragic if this public trial was to be dragging on along with the shenanigans of Meghan and Harry as she was about to celebrate her reign as a monarch. So it's a very significant, important time in the monarchy, as it always is. And then we have the scandals with Prince Charles and the Saudi businessman. But outside of all of that, guys, uh, this story actually landed in my lap via email. And I think that there's a lot of truth to it. It's not nearly as interesting as all of the other things that have gone on in Hollywood, but it's still very interesting. Meghan is enraged that Hollywood's most wanted jeweler, Lorraine Schwartz, didn't want to post her on Instagram. This is harking back to Meghan and Harry's Times 100 cover. And she actually was quite upset that she was not lent or directly loaned personally jewelry from Lorraine Schwartz. Now, if you don't know who Lorraine Schwartz is, she is a very significant jewelry designer to the Hollywood's most rich, elite and famous ladies. If you are not wearing a Lorraine Swartz and you are an A-lister, or at least you are deemed as an A-lister, then you really don't have it like that. And you really aren't as hot or as important as the press will make you out to be, as you feel you are, so on and so forth. Lorraine Schwartz is a jeweler, personal favourite of the likes of Beyonce, the likes of the Kardashians, um, the likes of Iman, who was married to the late David Bowie. She's a very big thing. And of course, she has a lot of personal relationships with very important people who Meghan wanted to have access to. I'm going to get into the email that was sent to me and then of course I'm going to drop my thoughts and I'm going to add my personal research so you guys can get a bit more of a backdrop of why Megan is so upset that Lorraine Schwartz has not taken her under her wing and directly introduced her to these leading ladies because she has them on speed dial and of course it is not accessible to Megan herself. Megan is struggling with her public image and she is hoping that she can improve her public image by standing at Harry's side while he tries to reinstate his royal privileges. Megan was hoping that by wearing some of Lorraine Schwartz's jewelry, she would be able to get back into the good graces of Hollywood. She wanted to build a connection with Lorraine as Lorraine lives in the pockets of Hollywood's most elite ladies. Meghan, however, has realised that having Serena Williams by her side was simply not enough to boost her likability or save her ailing profile. Having severed all of her Canadian ties, she found herself 
and is currently struggling to get into Hollywood. And her husband, however, is desperate on the other hand to get back to his old life. Underneath it all, Harry's Hollywood dream is finished. He's secretly done with America and Meghan knows it. She needs to secure a fallback plan because she knows she can't go back to England ever. At least she doesn't want to. According to sources, her personal assistant has been instructed to contact Lorraine's team and are trying to secure a date and time, a meeting between Meghan and herself so that she can get her feet under the table. And this is why. Even if you don't see Lorraine Schwartz on a red carpet, you can't exactly miss her work. That's because after about two decades helming her namesake brand and even more time in the business of baubles, she's become synonymous with megawatt celebrity jury. Just hearing her name perhaps conjured up visions of the Emerald Earrings Beyonce donned at the 2013 presidential inauguration or the 15 karat diamond ring Kanye West got down on one knee to propose with that same year. A bona fide trend-setting jeweler to the stars, some of the most recognised names in the world, we're talking Kim Kardashian, Sophia Vergra, Blake Lively, Angelina Jolie, Chrissy Teigen and Cardi B have dazzled in her pieces, but jewellery was not always the plan for Mrs Swartz, as she revealed in an exclusive recent interview. Life eventually led her back to her family's diamond roots after studying fine arts and public relations at New York University and producing fashion shows for clubs on the side. Her parents suggested she join them in the office for more steady work. I went in and they thought I would do more. I guess like administration work, she recalled, and she continues to go on and on and on. She carved out a role dealing diamonds on her own when she inadvertently ended up in Hollywood. One of her friends had bought a diamond from me and she was like, Lorraine, I have someone to bring you who wants to meet you. And it was a man and she came in to look and then I went to meet David and they bought a yellow diamond from me for her engagement ring. Fast forward more than three decades later, she played a role in some of the biggest and at times most personal moments in stars' lives. The glove Beyonce wore in her now iconic single ladies music video, the tassel bracelet on Winfrey's wrist during the final episode of her talk show, and the list goes on and on. So that just really summarises a few of the reasons as to why Meghan Markle wants to get into Lorraine's good books. Now, as we all know, when she shot her Times cover with Harry, Meghan actually had to pay the loan outright. It wasn't loaned to her for free because, of course, she's not really a significant person in Lorraine's world. And Lorraine has so much access to these people who have bigger star power, they have bigger names, they have likability, they have real fans, yada, yada, yada. So Meghan was quite miffed about that, but she never gave up there. According to this private source, she has been repeatedly trying to reach out to Lorraine through the back door via her PA and she actually has a specific file for her in the PR office whereby she's constantly trying to invite her to things, she's constantly trying to reach out, send in notes and it's quite desperate really, it's gotten quite desperate but she feels as though by getting this Hollywood jeweler to like her by befriending this very significant lady. She's going to get access to Hollywood royalty. And it's simply not working. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's fallen flat. So Megan's quite miffed about that. And of course, her husband is on his way out. I personally believe that Harry is pretty much dead set on getting his life in the UK back up and running. He doesn't want it to be over with yet. And it's obvious for all of us to see. So with all that being said, guys, I will be back with another video. Bye.